-hmm. There we go. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member, Mr. Collins, uh, thank you for having me here today. I received word on my way in that many of the journalists were confused as to why I was invited, and none of them knew uh, that I myself uh, was the victim of a hate crime when I was in high school. That's something that very few people know about me, uh, because the media and the journalists and the left are not interested in telling the truth about me, because I don't fit the stereotype of what they like to see in black people. I'm a Democrat, I support the President of the United States, and I advocate for things that are actually affecting the black community. I'm honored to be here today in front of you all because the person sitting behind me is my 75-year-old grandfather. I've always considered myself to be my grandfather's child, and I mean to say that my sense of humor, my passion, and my work ethic all comes from the man that is sitting behind me. My grandfather grew up on a sharecropping farm in the segregated South. He grew up in an America where words like racism and white nationalism held real meaning under the Democrat Party's Jim Crow laws. My grandfather's first job was given to him at the age of five years old, and his job was to lay tobacco out to dry in an attic in the South. My grandfather has picked cotton, and he has also had experiences with a Democrat terrorist organization of that time, the Ku Klux Klan. They would regularly visit his home, and they would shoot bullets into it. They had an issue with his father, my great-grandfather. During my formative years, I had the privilege of growing up in my grandfather's home. It's going to shock the committee, but not once, not in a single breath of a conversation did my grandfather tell me that I could not do something because of my skin color. Not once did my grandfather hold a gripe against the white man. I was simply never taught to view myself as a victim because of my heritage. I, I learned about faith in God, family, and hard work. Those were the only lessons of my childhood. There isn't a single adult today that in good conscience would make the argument that America is a more racist or a more white nationalist society than it was when my grandfather was growing up. And yet we're hearing these terms sent around today because what they want to say is that brown people need to be scared, which seems to be the narrative that we hear every four years right ahead of a presidential election. Here are some things we never hear. 75% of the black boys in California don't meet state reading standards. In inner cities like Baltimore, within five high schools and one middle school, not a single student was found to be proficient in math or reading in 2016. The singlehood, mother, the single motherhood rate in the black community, which was at 23% in the 1960s when my grandfather was coming up, is at a staggering 74% today. I am guessing there will be no committee hearings about that. There are more black babies born, there are more black babies aborted than born alive in cities like New York, and you have Democrat Governor Andrew Cuomo lighting up buildings to celebrate late-term abortions. I could go on and on, but my point is that white nationalism, white nationalism did not do any of those things that I just brought up. Democrat policies did. Let me be clear. The hearing today is not about white nationalism or hate crimes. It's about fear-mongering, power, and control. It's a preview of a Democrat 2020 election strategy, same as the Democrat 2016 election strategy. They blame Facebook, they blame Google, they blame Twitter. Really, they blame the birth of social media, which has disrupted their monopoly on minds. They called this hearing because they believe that if it wasn't for social media, voices like mine would never exist. That my movement, Blexit, which is inspiring black Americans to, lead, to leave the Democrat Party, would have never come about. And they certainly believe that Donald Trump would not be in office today. Looking on the next thing to focus on now that the Russian collusion hoax has fallen apart. What they won't tell you about this, the statistics and the rise of white nationalism is that they've simply changed the data set points by widening the definition of hate crimes and upping the number of reporting agencies that are able to report on them. What I mean to say is that they're manipulating statistics. The goal here is to scare blacks, Hispanics, gays, and Muslims into helping them, center, helping them censor dissenting opinions, ultimately into helping them regain control of our country's narrative, which they feel that they lost. They feel that President Donald Trump should not have beat Hillary. If they actually were concerned about white nationalism, they would be holding hearings on Antifa, a far left, violent, white gang who determined one day in Philadelphia in August that I, a black woman, was not fit to sit in a restaurant. They chased me out, they yelled race traitor to a group of black and Hispanic police officers who formed a line to protect me from their ongoing assaults. They threw water at me, they threw eggs at me, and the leftist media remained silent on it. If they were serious about the rise of hate crimes, we may, they may perhaps be examining themselves and the hate that they have drummed up in this country. Bottom line 
is that white supremacy, racism, nation, white nationalism, words that once held real meaning have now become nothing more than election strategies. Every four years, the black community is offered handouts and fear. Handouts and fear. Reparations and white nationalism. This is the Democrat preview. Of course, society is not perfectible. We've heard testimony of that today. There are pockets of evil that exist and those things are horrible and they should be condemned. But I believe the legacy and the ancestry of black Americans is being insulted every single day. I will not pretend to be a victim in this country. I know that that makes many people on the left uncomfortable. I wanna talk about real issues in black America. I wanna talk about real issues in this country and real concerns. The biggest scandal, this is my last sentence, in American politics is that Democrats have been conning minorities into the belief that we are perpetual victims, all but ensuring our failure. Racial division and class warfare are central to the Democrat Party platform. They need blacks to hate whites, the rich to hate the poor, and soon enough it'll be the tall hating the short. The time of the witness has expired, Ms. Clark. Am I the reason you get stoned every week now? Build up integrity, got you texting, emailing me, wanting me to feel with you, baby. Just face reality, move on. Sometimes it's hard to face reality.